part of this gospel that just kind of turns my stomach a little bit. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Ugh. If I had been Jesus and they gave me a piece of baked fish, I would have said, okay, have you got a slice of sausage pizza or something else, please? But... The reason for that was because even though the disciples were rejoicing and they were amazed, they were still stuck in their old way of thinking. They were still convinced that they were seeing a ghost. And even though it was a Jesus ghost in their minds, it still was a ghost. And Jesus said what he said to them, and they go, okay. Thank you, Jesus ghost, that's very nice. So he needed to give them some kind of physical proof that he was more than just some disembodied spirit. Ghosts can't eat physical food. So if they wouldn't believe because of the message that Jesus gave, if they couldn't believe because of what was right there before him, maybe what they had learned that ghosts can't eat was enough to move them beyond their preconceived notion. So even that was taking a step into new life. And that's what Easter is supposed to be all about. Letting ourselves be made new. Letting ourselves stay made new new. There's a quote that I have that I like. It says, there's a certain amount of discipline in staying risen. It's not just something where Christ is risen. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, my heart is full of joy. But then we go back to the way we were, the way that feels more comfortable or familiar or less threatening, then we're not really staying risen with Christ. If the resurrection of Jesus does not have an impact on our thinking, Father Ron Rollheiser says, to consider life tragic is not to believe in the resurrection. So, there's hope that is so much a part of all of this. You know, on, on this day, <laughs> I just heard a quote the other day. It said, the day that God made hope must have been the same day that he made springtime. And I think on a beautiful day like today, we can, we can understand that that hopefulness, that new life, that new beginning. Our lives have meaning and purpose and a direction and a future.
And if we can't see that, if we stay focused on what was or what's holding us back or our own negative attitudes, then we're not going to stay risen. Like the disciples in Emmaus, they had to get over their fear. And so do we. Whatever it is that we are afraid of, whatever it is that holds us back, whatever it is that keeps us from taking the steps that God will will bless us. God doesn't hold us back. We can hold ourselves back. One day I was standing on a road. This road is known by many names. Life, growth, achievement, faith, happiness. I was just standing there, looking at something on the road up ahead. The thing that I saw was a huge, mean-looking bull. And this bull was blocking my path. I knew that to keep moving ahead, I was going to have to get past that bull. It scared me just to think about it. For a long, long time, I stood still looking at the bull, hoping and praying it would somehow move from my path so I could continue along the road. However, nothing changed, except that I heard a distant voice whisper, do whatever it is you have to do in order to continue along the journey. That was the day I decided to take a deep breath, gather all the strength I could muster, and take the bull by the horns. I knew that in doing so, I would have to accept whatever consequences followed, good, bad, or indifferent. Having decided to be completely responsible for whatever happened to me, I set aside my doubts and fears and marched right up to the bull, grabbed those horns and said, all right, bull, you got to get out of my way or fight with me. Which will it be? <coughs> You'd never believe what happened next. That crazy bull sat down right on the road, sighed, and spoke to me. What took you so long getting here, he asked. I've been standing here waiting to offer you a ride. Hop up on my back and show me where it is you want to go. What was thought to be an insurmountable problem turned out to be a great blessing instead. All that I needed was the courage to discover that blessing. So we might ask ourselves, what is the bull in my life? What is the perceived fear that I have that keeps me from taking a step forward, accepting the invitation to pray or go on a retreat or expand my understanding? What is it that's holding me back from forgiving or asking for forgiveness? What is it that I think is standing in the road blocking my way that prevents me from seeking the help that I know maybe I need to get? Maybe the bulls that are blocking our paths aren't as formidable as we may make them out to be.
Just imagine. If we take that step, imagine if in hope we let ourselves move beyond where we are now. Imagine what could be possible if you believed that celebrating is not just for holidays. The kid you once were still believes in magic. You can touch the place inside where joy is alive. Enormous pleasure can be derived from little things. Imagine what could be possible if you believe that it delights and satisfies the soul to give a gift anonymously. That you can be generous with yourself, too. A resolution is a choice, not an obligation. Imagine what could be possible if you believed that you are worth it. That's new life. That's resurrection. Christ is risen by the power of God's love for us. To cover new ground. To expand our vision of the kingdom. That's where Christ calls us. There's a certain amount of discipline in staying risen. We just can't be stopped by all the bull that's around us.